Welcome back to the Frankie DeBunch TV show. The Tusculum Pioneers at the end of the first quarter lead at 14 to 6. Let's go ahead and take a look at your second half, your second quarter highlights, I should say. Charleston still driving with the football. Well, let's go ahead and start with the second quarter. Again, Charleston with the ball. Um, faces second down and 10, and I think really a play here that is going to define maybe even Mason Fowler in his season. This is kind of the consistency you're saying. He's just not super fast, but he just continues to come after the quarterback, applying some pressure and, uh, you know, a host of guys that can get back there into the backfield. Big turning point in the ball game, actually. You know, it's a long yardage here, and they call a pass play, and Mason does exactly as he's coached to do. He's got contained. He keeps contained. He makes a huge sack on their quarterback and uh, knocks him back into to their own territory. Just a big, big play, and, and now we put him in a really long yardage, and uh, it's easy to execute. Uh, defensively when you put them in this situation to give your offense an opportunity to get the ball back. Especially with the speed that you have facing a third down and 25 and it's Blaine Wilson who's trying to pick up that first down and again folks number 35 get used to his number I think uh, this year Boomer Brown made 15 tackles on the day. It's one of the best tackling performances outside of Alan Slaughter's 25 in a homecoming game that he had um, all day and um, force a punt situation West Sherrill with a high snap fortunate to get it away and I've seen pioneer teams in the past guys be out of position but there's a kind of a discipline here you guys set up the return for sure well we actually had something good that could have really happened here I'm just glad our kids did what they were coached to do and you'll see Wesley Jackson here come running free and his responsibility is to make sure the ball's kicked and help us get involved in the return and he does exactly what we're supposed to do number 94 there giving great effort Wes is a transfer from the Mexico military and also from the Florida area and Proud of his efforts, and he had a really good ball game for us, not only on special teams, but also playing defensive end. Pioneers have the ball for the first time here in the second quarter. Bo Cordell, first and 10 from their own 48. And here's a new guy, Josh Mackey, a North Carolina transfer for Tesco. First time he's touched the football in a real college game. He, he did transfer from the University of North Carolina, but was redshirted over there. So uh, Josh is going to be a great player. He's just got to get comfortable with the offense and learn a little bit more what we're trying to get accomplished. And uh, watch those guys has been around a while in here. He's got to catch a football. and. Again, first game jitters for him. Got to relax, catch it, and make some plays happen. And excited about what he brings to the to the Tuscan football team. When I saw the play and how it was designed and who it was going to, I was excited in the booth because I realized that I'd seen this in practice three or four different times, and he's picking up 10, 15 yards a pop just because he's getting some good downfield blocking as well. But, again, incomplete. And then a little bit of the penalty bug, I think, hits Tuscan here in this second quarter, and, and especially in this drive. A uh, false start. Um, then a good completion to Michael Rodriguez coming up, but another illegal motion. So uh, you kind of shooting yourself in your in your, I guess in the mouth in a way here in this second quarter. Yeah, unfortunately, we're, we're our guards were lining up in the backfield according to the uh, officials, and, and he may you know Pat Aiken may be a little deep, but uh, and he did warn him to play before to get up on line of scrimmage, and he never did. So little small coaching things that happened in game one that fortunately did not hurt us, but we've got to be a little better. We 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 did make some silly penalties and. You know, those things we got to eliminate. But uh, if you remember in game one last year, Bo Cordell would not have ever done that. You know, yeah. he never ran the football and got three or four versus taking a sack. So uh, Andy Rossetti comes in. Andy is a redshirt freshman punter. Uh, we didn't really talk a lot about him there in the first quarter, but just so excited about the game that he played. Uh, we have had uh, John Gregory, obviously, around here for a few years, sort of spoiled on, on his abilities and things that he did at the punting position. But... Andy Rossetti's going to be a great player for us. He's, he relaxed a little bit and started punting the football very, very well. Uh, you know, as a, as a freshman in your first college football game, regardless what position it is, it's hard to do. But when you're put on an island as a punter and you're the only one back there, uh, I, was, I was proud of his efforts. And he does a great job catching it and getting it off. And, uh, just excited about what he, he can and will bring to the table for the Pioneers. Now, again, what you don't really see there, it's an 18-yard punt, but he also got hit when he let that go. Was he hit by his own, the own, his own guy? No, I thought it should have been a, a penalty, actually. They came through there and ended up running into him. We didn't do as, as well as we need to on our punt team and made some personnel changes there. Hopefully we'll correct the mistakes that need to be corrected and, and be better next week. Folks, number 94 is going to be a pleasure to watch this year. Wesley Jackson, Jr., he's the one that disrupts that whole play. Luke Harris comes in and, and knocks Brian Lee down for a loss of two. But Wesley Jackson seemed to be a guy that any time the coaches on the sideline needed somebody in for a field goal, extra point, and we, didn't have, we, we weren't lined up properly special teams. 
it seemed like he always had his helmet on, was going to run out there no matter what. Now, it may have been him you were yelling at, <laughs> but I was excited about the energy that he brought to the Well, team. he's a great person. He's a great kid. He's a team player. He'll do whatever you ask him to do. And there's true freshman number 23, Katron Jelly Beckton from Miami, Florida, getting in on the play there and making something very, very positive happen for our football team. And uh, we had a number 23 years ago that played for us that ended up making millions of dollars in the NFL. Uh, Je Jelly is not Ricardo Coakley, but uh, he made as many plays wearing that jersey on Saturday as a true freshman that I remember a lot of guys making in, in the past. So excited about what Jelly brings to the table for us in the secondary. A Tusculum team again that still leads this football game right now here in the second quarter, 14 to 6, and you can see the defense putting a lot of pressure and forcing a fourth down coming up. But uh, Wilson just a little dump pass to Lockhart and great pursuit. At, you know, by this huge defensive line and a bunch of new faces out there on that defensive line. You brought in four kids at over 300 pounds. I think we saw two of them on Saturday. A lot of them got some playing time. They, they, those young guys are just living and learning. But uh, uh, Terrence Smith, who, who actually you know weighs 230 probably if we're stretching him, he's six foot six. He fits our scheme. He'll be able to make a lot of plays in what we're doing. Uh, he, he's tall and athletic and rangy and made a bunch of plays. And talking about Wes Jackson making plays and Jason Muling up front made some plays for us and. Then we throw in some freshman Nick Nick Smith from over at Seymour comes in and makes a few plays late in the ball game. And James Farmer from Stevenson High School in Atlanta comes in at th over 300 pounds making plays. Damian Herring, another nose guard, not very big. They call him Little Mua because he looks like Big Fatua Mua. They got a lot of talent in, in that def young defensive line group. But <clears throat> there's old Zach Norman making a really big play for us. And I'm not sure who that was at free getting in on the tackle. But we're starting to play. If you'll notice, there's five and six black shirts getting to the football making that play. And We've emphasized all 11 running to the ball and do a great job of that on Saturday. We skipped ahead here in the second quarter as the Pioneers had forced uh, Charleston to punt. Charleston then came back and forced Tusculum in a three and out. Andy Rossetti getting a uh, punt off of 35 yards. So first and 10 from the Charleston 25-yard line. And really, they put together a little bit of a drive. Second and two, a first down and 10. Give it to Lattimore, who goes for a yard. Uh, Blaine Wilson will uh, keep it. Um, but this defense right now, uh, you see Jelly Beckton. I mean, these guys are right now excited to be out there. Well, right there, they were doing exactly what their coach to do. They, they, they let it, uh, they kept extending it, extending it, getting people to run the football. It's what we're coached to do, give our, our, our guys a chance to get there and slow play the option. And uh, here, they're handing it off, and there goes, uh, I think that's Zach Norman. He's got the fullback, so he takes the fullback. You know, those are things that, that seem easy and seem simple, but you got to get your kids have to be disciplined to to, uh, to win football games. And I thought we played disciplined on Saturday, definitely enough to win the game. I believe this play right here, Blaine Wilson, one of the first third downs that they had picked up in the entire game, and I thought it was a little bit lucky because Higgins uh, comes actually out of this and falls to the ground as the ball is hitting him in the shoulder pad. So. A little success, and I thought, well, is that what they needed on first down and 10? Daryl Bird, I thought, was a speedster uh, for them. And, look, he's being run down by Boomer Brown. He would have gotten there, I believe. But, um, you know, you're showing some speed and some speed in athleticism. Maybe you just didn't have last year either. Uh, true, true. we we got to do a better job here getting off the block in our natural and diamond position. But that's great effort by Matthias Brown, uh, just running sideline to sideline. And, and, again, this scheme really fits him to a T. He's got so much... Uh, natural speed and athletic ability. It's going to be hard for a lot of teams to block. Again, in the secondary, uh, it's going to be a tough pass to complete. Maybe it will come clear here, but um, I think Durante Hunter last year makes this connection with big six foot five wide receiver. It's just, that's always tough, but right there is Ashby with him stripe for stripe. Ashby's got to do a little better job. He's in his hip pocket and needs to be in front of him. If it's a good throw, it's probably six points. And uh, we, we did catch some breaks, uh, which we needed, and, and I firmly believe Good football teams will catch breaks in, at due time, and we played hard enough to get some breaks. We deserve some of those breaks, so it's uh, uh, fortunate for our team that they didn't connect on those. But uh, and Darian's there; he's got to be in a little bit better position. Third down and four, block in the back. We'll take this one back a little bit, so it'll be a third down and eleven for Charleston again. Still in the second quarter, as we're approaching almost three or four minutes to play here in this first half, and Charleston still in the game. It's not like they're away. It's fourteen to six. They're in the game, even though it looks as if Tusculum has controlled this contest for the most part, which is the truth. That is what has happened is Wilson here again on the play that did not count. And then Wilson under a lot of pressure um, looking downfield, was looking for Higgins. And once again, there's that true freshman Beckton again with the play. Jelly almost gets the pick here. Great job getting his hands on the football and does what he's coached to do. And he'll make a bunch of those plays in his career if he'll continue to take coaching. 
So Charleston forced to punt, fourth down and 11 from their own 49 yard line. And Cheryl, it was not a punting duel at the beginning. John Gregory has said, Andy Rossetti will be better than I am in my career. You just give him some time. Wes Cheryl is a guy who is a seasoned punter. Uh, I believe he averaged just 32 yards a kick last year. And, and early, I don't know if it was nerves or it was the first game that they had kicked, but neither punter seemed to really settle in until the second half. Pioneers have it first and 10 from the 24, Chad Blakely gets the ball for two yards and you're trying to put the drive here right at the end of the first half and I know Mark Kolb, I know what his goals are in scoring some points and this was a very efficient drive. Very efficient. We actually start playing a lot better offensively right now. Uh, again, we only have 14 points but I feel like we've played better than that. We're throwing and catching, we're moving the chains and uh, our kids are starting to get a little excited, a little comfortable finally about what we're trying to get accomplished and everything just feels and looks different and as the game pro progresses we start doing the little things we have to do to be successful on offense. Rashad Carter, 14 yards of his 166 on the day right there for a big man showing his agility as well. Bo Cordell, very confident in that pocket right now on first and 10 to Deontay Gist and just makes one man miss there and he's still in the free and, and I still see that potential for this wide receiving core which it's hard to believe I'm saying this. Ryan Talent, Jarrell Neesmith, Nate Binder, a wide receiving core that is going to be number one more athletic I think than last year's receiving core but much more much more potent as well. Well we, we could we could do a lot more things with our receiving core this year than we could last. Uh, I don't know if they'll be better as a whole but they'll definitely be more athletic and more exciting and uh, can catch a football and make some very very positive things happen. Third down and a yard Brian Marshall a key first down pickup here he runs for three yards Bam Harrison I like the name uh, does give Brian, you know, just a reminder, look, you know, you're still in the game, <laughs> kind of upends him right here, a deep leader in a way, but it does pick up the first down, and, and now you're in their side of the field with about a minute and a half playing in this first half. Yeah, we're finally executing. Here's one of those throws that, you know, uh, well, that wasn't the one I was referring to, but we took a shot downfield here trying to make something big happen right here before the half, and uh, great protection up front. Our offensive line's doing a phenomenal job. They actually have... Uh, have us covered somewhat here, so it's fine. We'll regroup and go back and, and call another play. But Cordell last year was underthrowing that a lot and getting tip balls and near interceptions and a lot of interceptions. I like the fact that he is overthrowing his receivers, and you didn't see that a lot out of him last year. No, that's all a part of maturing, and you're exactly right. He is going to start giving them a chance to catch the football and letting them run through the ball instead of trying to aim it or maybe underthrow it. And, just uh, throwing it a whole lot more confident as much as anything. Another penalty on the Pioneers, but here's Deontay Gist. Not only is he elusive, but very strong. He fought off two tackles right there to pick up extra yards. Unfortunately, one of those plays that, that comes back because of the hole, but uh, Cordell zings this ball right to him. Great throw, great throw right here. Good protection up front. Unfortunately, we get called for a hold, and that's, uh, that's unfortunately the game. And when you throw it as much as we do, we're going to catch some of those uh, Goods and bads, but we regroup and, and do what we got to do offensively. And uh, you know, it, we're in that point right now where you, you don't really want to make a mistake, but you got to move the chains and make something happen. So our kids are feeling that, and we're actually we're actually doing great. There's big uh, Hannibal Ruiz at guard taking out their nose guard and doing a phenomenal job for us up front. The Tuscaloosa Pioneers driving second down and 20, uh, finding Brian Marshall, and then third down and 15, Bo Cordell uh, gives it just a little bit of a scramble, good coverage. They know that they're wanting to go deep. Uh, put a second back on the clock here in a second, and you're just going to try to throw it up for grabs just to end the half. And um, I hate the stat for Bo, but I understand the logic behind it. Um, in basketball, when there is a heave at the buzzer, it's not counted as a field goal opportunity for that individual. And this is obviously a Hail Mary issue uh, or a situation coming up for him. And, uh, as you'll see here in just a second, it is picked off. But I think this five yards hurt. I think, you know, he threw this a little bit shorter than he wanted to coming up, and just that little five-yard penalty kind of hurt right here at the end of the half. We had some sound uh, makers going off in the stands on the visitor side that I think kept us from being able to stand in there and do what we needed to do, and our security at, at Tuscan handled that at halftime for us. But uh, Bo throwing it up and just giving us a chance. That's all we asked him to do was protect our – our offensive line to protect, let him throw it up in the air and give us a chance. And we got down there and banged it around a little bit. And although we didn't have the success we needed, it's, it's good that we got this repped because it may end up coming into play late in the ball game where we have to have it for the win instead of having to have it to, uh, to, to try to put points on the board there before the half. The Tuscaloosa Pioneers lead 14 to 6 at halftime. We'll come back and take a look at the third quarter stats and highlights right after this when the Frankie DeBunch TV show continues. 